Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell quick tip. In this quick tip video, we are going to be looking at the write progress commandlet, and that's actually used to create a kind of like a visual progress bar for your script. So this could be super handy if you just want to make like some checkpoints in your scripts to kind of update how far it is, uh, but also super useful if you have loops that you want to actually keep track of the progress especially if you're doing something with Active Directory, per se, or some files. And, you know, it could be 100 files or 1,000 files. You don't really know, or you're going through a CSV file. You're going through each line, maybe grabbing some Active Directory info. You don't really know how long it's going to take. You don't really know what step it's at if you're not outputting anything to the screen. And the right progress is something very visual that you'll be able to see, like, how far along your script is in the progress of that loop or in the progress of your script. And you'll be able to kind of easily see how much longer is kind of left and see how long it takes to run uh, without using the measure command. It won't give you an exact time, but at least you can see if it's 25% done, 50% done, 75% done, 90% done, etc. So let's actually go ahead and let's get started with seeing how to use the right progress commandlet. Now, one thing to note in Visual Studio Code, sometimes I do notice with the way that this window is configured anyways, it does not work at 100%. We will see the progress bar, but it will look a little weird. So I will show you guys, once we finish writing the script, I will actually show you guys what it looks like in the PowerShell 7 console, and as well as the PowerShell ISE. So let's actually go ahead and let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is actually create some objects because we're going to be doing it with a for each loop. So we're going to be creating uh, two arrays because um, I want to show you guys a inner and outer uh, loop. And you can actually track progress separately for those. So let's go ahead and let's just create our first um, array of objects here. We're just going to call this outer. And we're going to make this equal to an array of numbers 1 to 10. So if you guys haven't seen some of the other videos where I've used this before, I don't use it very often. Uh, so we're just creating a variable called dollar sign outer. So the dollar sign is the variable. The variable name is outer. And this is a array. So the at symbol with the parentheses and then the 1 dot dot 10 actually creates that span, which is going to be creating the objects with the number one through 10. So if we actually run this here and we actually look at what is inside outer, we will see numbers one through 10 appear on the screen. So that could be something very useful for you guys for uh, some other scripts. If you guys ever want to generate a list of numbers without writing them all out, uh, that is something that could be very useful. So let's actually do an inner object as well. And we're going to create that one one through 100. Now we just want to actually see a very basic progress bar first. Uh, so all we're going to do is we're just going to work with the outer object first. We're going to do a for each and we are going to do a dollar sign X in outer. And let's go ahead and open those curly brackets. And all we are going to do here is we also need to initiate a counter right before the uh, for each loop here. So we're going to do a counter equals one. And all we want to do is a write dash progress. And here what we're going to do is we are actually going to put an ID. IDs are really only necessary if you have multiple write progresses. Since we already know that we do want two of them, uh, and it is kind of a, just a good practice to insert the ID. So we're going to put ID of one. We are going to do activity. We are just going to do a loop for now as, as our activity. The status. So the status is actually a string of, you can say progress, or you can actually put the percentage of what it is completed. That's what I usually like to do. Uh, so what I like to do usually is just do a variable wrapper in here. And then I like to do a uh, another set of parentheses in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a counter 
divided by outer dot count. And then right outside that first parentheses here, we're going to do times 100, and that's going to give us 8%. And all we're going to do is percent uh, complete. And now we have one other thing to fill out here, which is the percent complete. All we need to do at that point is copy our little formula from here and put that in there. So that should work. Now, the only other thing that we need to do after the right progress is because we have a counter, we need to do a counter plus plus. Now in this situation, because we're just using numbers, we could have used the dollar sign X instead of counter. Uh, but I just want to pretend that these are objects that might be Active Directory objects or anything like that, where we can't really use them as a number. Uh, so we do need a counter there. So let's actually go ahead and let's just see how this looks like in Visual Studio Code. And the only thing that we're going to do just to make it, because there's only 10 objects, this will go very, very quickly is we are going to do a start leap in milliseconds and we are going to do 100 milliseconds between each interval just to make it visible here so there is our script so there it is it is complete now as you noticed if i run this again you're going to notice that it kind of stays right here it doesn't actually progress all the way through 100 once it gets to 100 it's done it it looks good um, but it's the progress of like once it gets like 40 or 50 percent kind of shrinks back down. But let's actually go ahead and let's see what it looks like in our PowerShell 7. So I am actually already. Uh, let me just see if I can zoom this in here a little bit more for us just to for you guys to be able to see it. So I'm already in the folder directory of where my script is here. So let me just run my script and there it is. So as you can see, you can see the progress bar up here. Everything looks great. And even if I open it up in PowerShell ISE and we run this, this will actually have a little pop-up appear and it shows it. And then once it's done, it disappears. So it does actually work very, very well. And we can actually even create inner progress bar or an inner loop with a progress bar. So let's actually go ahead and let's take a look at that. So what we're going to do is right after the first right progress here, um, we actually, we're going to do that. We are going to put our loop right before the right progress because technically the outer loop isn't done doing its thing till the, the inner loop is complete really. Um, so let's do a four. So let's do a inner counter is going to equal to one because we still need a counter variable for the inner loop. And we're going to do a four each. And we're going to do a dollar sign Y in inner. And let's do an open and close parentheses here. And then what we're going to just do is we're actually going to copy paste this code basically. And we are going to put the ID for the inner loop as two. And we are just going to put the activity as inner loop, the progress as outer loop. I might actually have to change the order of these, but we're just going to try this like this. And then all the only thing that we need to change here is the inner count and inner counter, inner counter, and then inner here, then the inter, inner counter here as well. All right, so that should work fine. Now, in this situation, we are actually going to see that Visual Studio Code does not really like this at all. Uh, so if we actually run this, we're going to see the inner loop. Uh, but we're actually never going to see the outer loops um, start here. So let's just wait for this to finish here. Oh, it actually did work. Uh, so actually earlier in my test, this actually did not work. Um, but here we actually have our inner loop, so it is looping through, and here we can actually see how the percentage complete looks a little weird till the 100, um, and then 
kind of it starts to work properly and then it kind of shrinks back down and we can see our outer loop here as well so everything is definitely seeming to work really really good here we have our inner we have our outer loop progress so you will be able to see your different progresses now if you wanted your outer loop on top you would have to actually do the right progress before the right progress of the inner loop it does go in order of the the way they appear and not necessarily the ID. The ID is just used to identify which progress bar to update. Um, the activity is just simply a label. The ID is what identifies the progress bars. So if we wanted to actually see that here, let me just stop the script here. And if all we actually did was put this little progress bar this right progress at the top here. And we restarted this code. We will see that the outer loop now appears at the top and the inner loop appears at the bottom. This might be what most people are kind of used to, seeing that the outer loop is on top and then the inner loop at the bottom. That is usually how most of the uh, pre-built PowerShell command lets do work when they use the progress bar. So let's actually go ahead and let's save this code. And let's run this code once again in our PowerShell 7 window, which is just the console. So here we can actually see the progress bars fully filling up for the inner loop. And then once the inner loop fills up, we should see the outer loop uh, increase. And then the inner loop starts to fill up again. And then once that inner loop finishes, the outer loop will increase and so on and so on till the outer loop completely finishes. Uh, so this again is just to add a very nice visual feel to your scripts because especially if you're just doing some calculations in the background of like comparing some data in like two csv files or comparing data between a csv file and your active directory maybe you don't want to print that stuff constantly to the screen but then you have no idea really how far you are in your script even if you are outputting the data into your screen you don't necessarily know what position that user is in in the file that you're comparing maybe so you don't really know how far along it is whereas these progress bars will give you a very very good visual of how far along the script is give you kind of a good idea of how much more time it's going to possibly take and the other thing that we can also look at is if we look at it in our powershell ise here and we run this we will actually see that we do have an outer loop and an inner loop. So this code works fantastic in PowerShell 5.1, 7.2, really doesn't matter. The only time that it really kind of runs a little weird is when you're running the code directly in Visual Studio Code. I've noticed that sometimes it looks a little off at times, um, but most of the time it does work uh, fantastic. So. That is it for the right progress commandlet. If you guys have any commandlets that you guys would like me to do a video on, please let me know in the comment section. If you guys have any comments or questions, please let me know in the comment section as well. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, also hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.